Stacy, I'm so excited to have fun with my family this summer, getting outside for hikes, bike rides, roasting s'mores over the fireplace. Oh, it sounds like so much fun. And you know what else it sounds like? A lot of bug bites. <laughs> we do get our fair share of bug bites, and those are not fun. If even just one kid gets one super itchy bite, it can ruin the whole day, or even worse, keep them up all night. But this summer, I'm prepared thanks to All Better Co. All Better Co. is a plant-powered first aid brand, and they just launched with their Don't Scratch That line of products, including first-of-their-kind patches and handy pens for itchy bug bites. The company was founded by two moms who wanted to make all-natural, plant-powered, topical solutions that are safe for everyday use and also powerful enough to actually work, calming bug bite irritation and inflammation. I'll be carrying All Better Co.'s Don't Scratch That Kit on every adventure this summer. Their kit includes their Don't Scratch That Pen, which is made with just enough premium hemp-derived CBD to soothe the skin, making it easier for us to heal ourselves, and Don't Scratch That Patches to seal in the relief and protect bites from scratchy little hands, and they're infused with soothing tea tree oil, so by the time you take them off, there's nothing to scratch. The patches are individually wrapped for on-the-go use, but are also great for nighttime. An added bonus is that both products don't just make the itch better. They nourish your skin with moisturizing ingredients like jojoba and coconut oil. Used together, the All Better Co. pen and patch are a powerful duo that you can bring anywhere summer fun takes you. Learn more about their premium hemp-derived CBD at allbetterco.com. While there, use our exclusive code D-I-J-F-Y 20 for 20% off any product. That's allbetterco.com code D-I-J-F-Y 20 for 20% off. Not buying gelatin just so you can make jello or fruit jellies, but because you can make things like panna cotta and creme caramel and all of those things, those creamy set desserts. There are some chocolate mousse recipes that require just a little bit of gelatin to stabilize them. You can use gelatin to stabilize whipped cream if you want something that's going to last like a Cool Whip does. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You? A podcast about feeding kids. Hey, this is Stacy and Megan. We're making our summer season super sweet with what we're calling summer solutions. <laughs> Ooh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> These shorter episodes are quick and to the point so that you can make the most of your summer too. Today we'll be talking about no-bake summer desserts, but real quick before we get to that, you know what we're going to say. We want to let you know about our Didn't I Just Feed You community. If you haven't already joined our free community board, you guys are missing out. It's the place where you can hop on and say, hey, we're headed to a rental with a tough kitchen. I need help figuring out what to prep. That won't take up all my time. And guess what? Your Didn't I Just Feed You friends, including us, will answer what could be better. And if you're able to contribute to Didn't I Just Feed You, you can join as a supporting member. We recently changed our membership options to offer more choices at affordable contribution points. And we switched the benefits to better match what you guys ask for the most Didn't I Just Feed You recipes and bonus episodes. To learn more, go to didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. Okay, I'm like super pumped about this episode because we're talking about no bake summer desserts. Let's do it. You start. You're the dessert queen. <laughs> Let's do this almost like I don't fire know. I was style. To be excited I'm too, excited too. We could like high five across the internet, but no. Okay, here we go. Internet, it's coming at you. There's just a little delay today. <laughs> My brain. <laughs> okay. I think of like categories. So maybe I can, we can like work in categories and you can jump off quick fire ideas within those categories. Cool. Wait, are we including popsicles and ice creams in this no bake dessert category or no? I think we shouldn't. I think that one like as general categories, they're kind of obvious. Two, we actually have an episode dedicated to popsicles in our public feed. So people can go back and listen to that. And if you're a supporting member, remember that you don't just get two new bonus episodes every month. You also get the entire catalog of bonus episodes. And we have one on ice cream desserts too for our supporting members. So I'm going to say for the sake of keeping this focused and quick, we covered those. Short and sweet. Short and yes. sweet. Okay. Let's start 
with whipped cream. I know that that feels like very basic in some ways, but whipped cream is actually the basis for a lot of other desserts that we will talk about, like icebox cakes, mousses, semi fredos, et cetera. So I want to shout out just like regular whipped cream, but I also know that we have like a lot of plant-based or non-dairy folks in our community. And we've never really talked about like coconut whipped cream and how easy that is to make. Totally. And it's delicious, actually. It's really delicious. And there are some times where I will choose coconut, whipped coconut cream over whipped cream. Why? Because of the flavor and also the fat. Coconut whipped cream has uh, it's a slightly higher percentage of fat. And so it has like a thicker texture, even when whipped. And structurally, that can help certain desserts. Cool. So if you've never done it before, the idea is that you take full fat coconut milk and refrigerate the whole can. Then when it's refrigerated, it's sort of solidified. And some of the coconut water will also sit on the top of it. So you open up the can, drain off that little bit of coconut water move the solidified coconut cream to a bowl and then whip it with either a hand mixer or a stand mixer. You can sweeten it. You can add vanilla. You can add cinnamon. You can add whatever seasonings you like to it. It's very useful to have on hand and to know how to do in case you have non-dairy folks in your life, which I currently do now in my new neighborhood. And I will say that as someone who had a kid who did not eat dairy for many years, It is wise to keep a can of coconut milk in your fridge at all times, just so you're ready to make it. Because there were a lot of times when I was like, oh, I want to make this. And the coconut milk wasn't cold. It really does need to sit overnight to work. It really needs to be in there. So I used to just literally keep a can of coconut milk in my fridge at all times, just like in the back so that I was ready to go. As a quick buyer, what are the things that you would do with it? Well, Anything that we did with, because Isaac was dairy free. So it was like, it was a swap in for everything. So even just like making Sundays, I used to make a lot of eaten mess in the summer. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. That's on my whipped cream list. Yeah. So I love it. It's just, you know, store-bought meringues, Trader Joe's, like they're store-bought meringues are pretty easy to get now. You just break it up. And then fresh fruit, I would do it with strawberries mostly and whipped cream and kind of like make a big mess of it all. And it's delicious. And if you use that framework, which is basically like whipped cream, something fruity and something crunchy, you can make like a hundred different desserts. Like you could do grilled pineapple and graham crackers and whipped cream and like either layer it like a trifle or serve it all mushed up, messed up together. And I'm glad you mentioned trifle because I know you want to go on, but I want to pause there because trifle was on my list. I think trifle yes. is a really like it's slightly different, but another great whipped cream dessert. Yeah. Trifle actually uses two no baked components, whipped cream and custard, yes. which is next on my list. If you're ready to yeah, talk about it. One thing yeah. in the whipped cream category, any whipped cream with fruit And then we're also going to talk about, I I think I said this already, but like we're going to talk about using whipped cream to make uh, icebox cakes or icebox treats too. So just like generally always have heavy cream on hand in the summer. I love Cool Whip. I grew up with it. And my grandmother used to always serve us like fresh fruit and like half thawed Cool Whip. So it'd be like kind of icy, but kind of creamy. And I think that's a top tier dessert. Um, I also love that you can take whipped cream and fold in like either, uh, like you would sweeten a little bit and fold in like jam or macerated fruit. Um, there's a really great recipe, I think on kitchen where it's just whipped cream and watermelon and you like puree the watermelon together and then freeze it. So you can make a, like a semi fredo, like a frozen fruitish, almost ice cream like dessert too. Yes. And basically you're getting into full territory too which fool was traditionally like stewed fruit, custard and whipped cream. But some recipes you'll find will not use the custard anymore, some modern recipes. But it's the same idea, like trifle, fool, like it's all... Even shortcake, I think, falls into that category, which maybe we didn't mention because it seems so obvious, but like whipped cream, any kind of fruit, store-bought biscuits or cake, pound cake, and dessert is done. Totally. I'm glad that you brought up Cool Whip because I find that Cool Whip actually 
functions better in some of the frozen whipped cream dessert recipes. Yeah. So like a semi fredo, a frozen mousse, a no bake pie, I feel like Cool Whip just makes it not only easy, but the integrity of the frozen dessert comes out better sometimes. Yeah. It is less fussy than having to use homemade whipped cream in those frozen no bake dessert preparations. Yeah. Okay. Well, le- I was going to go to custard next, but maybe we should talk about no bake. I keep calling them no bake, but they're called ice box yeah. cakes and pies. My grandmother used to make one that like an an icebox pie, store-bought graham cracker crust. So she wasn't even turning on the oven to like bake the graham cracker crust. It gets Cool Whip, sweetened condensed milk, and a little bit of lemonade concentrate. You like basically just fold those things together, put it in the graham cracker shell, and then freeze it. And then she would serve it to us with more Cool Whip on top of it. That sounds so good. Do you love it? Like, do you do something like that now? I don't think I've ever made it for my family. I don't think I've even had it in years. But now I kind of want it. I've never had it, but it. it, I already feel like it tastes like nostalgia. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, it just has that vibe of a nostalgic dessert. Are there other no-bake pies that you make in the summer? To be honest, no. I feel like when I go for pie, I love baking pies in the summer. I think it's very funny that pies are thought of as like a holiday thing because they are too. But summer fruit pies are like my favorite. I bake pies most frequently in the summertime. So I feel like that's what I'm going to go for. But I do love a good no-bake peanut butter chocolate pie is delicious chocolate mousse pie. Sometimes I won't make the actual pie, but like a frozen mousse where you're using Cool Whip and sometimes condensed milk. It really depends on the recipe, but, you know, just crushing up graham crackers at the bottom of a, you know, you do it parfait style instead of as a full pie, but it's all the same basic elements, some sort of quote unquote crust, like crushed graham crackers, then that frozen mousse and then whipped cream on top. And then like, chocolate shavings or fresh fruit or something to top it off, sprinkles, whatever, is really, really fun to make. Even if you don't make it in a pie presentation, just putting little jars. I hear you too on the like fruit pie. There's a difference between like summer fruit pies and icebox pies. Yes, for sure. And there is the like nostalgia thing. Every single one of the icebox pies that I'm thinking of are like Cool Whip and chocolate pudding, yeah. and the, like the the chocolate pudding like mix from the box from the bag, mixed with the Cool Whip, and then you just like set it in the store bought pie crust. I'm like I can't think of any where it's like really fresh, fresh. Yes, yeah, <laughs> totally, it's different. <laughs> so or fresh ingredients. There's something that isn't pie, but an ice box, quote unquote, cake that I've done yes. a couple of times where I literally do. A layer of cookies, whipped cream. A layer of cookies, whipped cream. A layer of cookies, whipped cream. And then put what it What kind off. of cookies? So I've done with Oreos, with Thin Mint type cookies, and chocolate chip cookies. Like Chips Ahoy. Old school kind of crumbly chocolate chip cookies. And my kids really love that. I also love that. <laughs> my favorite is the ones with the famous chocolate wafers, which for a while were like hard to find in the grocery store. And I feel like now icebox pies have become really popular. And so they're back again. And I love that with those like little, they're round and they're very thin. You could build like in a loaf pan, which is typically how I do it, or like a baking pan, or you can make individual ones building them in a muffin pan. The thing to know is that sort of like the coconut whipped cream, like those are not an instant dessert. Yes. You have to like have a little forethought because most of them take at least four hours to set in the fridge, but they're even better if you can do them overnight. And what you're unlocking here is this idea that any sort of like wet, no bake preparation from whipped cream, cool whip, coconut whipped cream to chocolate pudding even like whipped cream and pie filling can be layered with any sort of like crispy, crunchy cookie or cake, like graham crackers. You mentioned Chips Ahoy and make an incredible, I, I'm like salivating right now. <laughs> I can tell how into this you are. I love it. Thinking about like, oh, 
graham crackers with like chocolate pudding and then fluff and then more graham, like building a whole like s'mores icebox pie. I want it right now. Yeah, that sounds delicious. I also really love key lime flavored things. So I used to make key lime pie ice cream sandwiches where I would make the simplest ice cream, which is a little bit of effort, but it is no bake. And then put lemon zest in it and just sandwich that between graham crackers. Or you can get like, do a no bake key lime filling, you know, again, using the whipped cream, maybe a custard depends on the recipe. Cool whip makes it really easy. And then just a graham cracker crust. And it's so delicious with lots of whipped cream on top. I can't believe we're talking about this and you've never done the like, the my grandmother's sweet condensed milk, whipped cream, li- limeade concentrate and made like a key lime pie that's no big. I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. It sounded so delicious. I mean, to be honest, this whole idea of these kinds of like whipped cream, condensed milk desserts were a part of my repertoire as I got older. Like I did not grow up with anything even remotely like this. Yes. I mean, we grew up like buying Cool Whip every once in a while, but as a straight substitute for whipped cream. But in my Greek home, none of this stuff, like it was all a revelation when I got into my 20s. This was only my mom's mom in the summers that I, like when I would go and stay with her for the summer that she would do these sort of no-bake hacks which I love so much. I love them too. I think they're really great. I think they they feel refreshing. I mean, they feel kind of lighter for whatever that's mm-hmm. worth. And they take a little less effort and you don't have to turn on the oven. I mean, I do think they're a win. And there's sort of, like for many of these that we're talking about, these sort of like assembly things, the stakes are really low yeah. if you want to include your kids in it. And it's not so much like precise measuring, like they're kind of hard to mess up. And even presentation wise, the stakes are low. Like we're talking about, uh, you know, you're like, do you make an icebox pie? And I'm like, mm, I make it in a jar or in a cup. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like eating mess is literally a mess. Like it looks like a mess. Yes. So it all kind of works. It just gets broken up and smushed together in this very glorious way because the flavors are nice and clean. You know, it's like this fresh fruit this like clean, sweet dairy cream flavor. And then that's something crunchy that like adds the whole rest of it. I don't know. I really like it. In some ways, that's also what we've come to expect from like commercial ice cream, but in like a no yeah. form, right? Like it's creamy, it's cool. There's contrast of flavor. There's fun little bits. Yeah, totally. And add-ins in there. I love that. Phyllis, pause for just a second. Let's take a quick break to hear from this week's sponsor. Megan, we might not be feeding babies anymore, but based on feedback from our baby mama listeners, they are as excited about Amara Organic Foods as we are. I'm not surprised. Baby food options may have changed over the years, but the fact that parents want what's best for their babies never changes. Even though we're no longer feeding babies, we love that Amara offers delicious baby food with the most nutrition as affordably and conveniently as possible. And in the most inventive way, their baby foods come in an on-the-go powder. You just add water, breast milk, or formula, mix, and serve. This allows you to customize the texture of your baby's meal, which is ready in seconds. You end up with a customized puree that has all the taste, textures, and nutrients of fresh purees. Pretty amazing, right? Totally. It might sound wild, But when Amara Organic Foods founder Jessica realized that by removing the water content from fresh foods, she could retain all of their nutrients and flavor without having to boil them to death, she partnered with an infant nutritionist to turn these super powders into a less processed baby food that is 100% organic, non-GMO, and plant-based. The most exciting part is that these powders make it possible to serve up quality organic foods at more affordable prices. Amara costs less than $2 per meal, which is less than the leading brands. It's no wonder that Amara was voted best baby food by The Bump, Good Housekeeping, and What to Expect. Learn more at amaraorganicfoods.com backslash D-I-J-F-Y and get 20% off their online shop using our exclusive code D-I-J-F-Y. That's D-I-J-F-Y for 20% off any purchase at A-M-A-R-A organicfoods.com slash D-I-J-F-Y, short for Didn't I Just Eat You. 
some of the things that Stacy and I have bonded about over the years aren't even food or family related. It's our real talk about body odor, boob sweat, and <laughs> thigh chafe. <laughs> it's true. That's how you introduced me to our latest sponsor, Mega Babe. When you stopped to apply their thigh rescue anti-friction stick right in the middle of the streets of Los Angeles when we were together. <laughs> Mega Babe is an amazing line of innovative problem solving products for all those body issues that used to be taboo. I love that thigh rescue anti friction stick for summer shorts wearing and under dresses. It glides on super smoothly, creating a friction free barrier to help my thighs rub together without irritation. And don't let the name fool you either. You can use thigh rescue anti friction anywhere chafe is an issue. I also couldn't survive Southern summers without Mega Babe's Bus Dust Anti-Boob Sweat Powder. This aluminum and talc-free powder comes in a non-aerosol pump for easy, mess-free application. It absorbs under boob sweat quickly, keeping you dry and smelling sweet, too. And I have to say, it works for small boobs, too. <laughs> <laughs> we also both adore that Mega Babe is women-owned and body positive. Megan got me into their Thigh Rescue Anti-Friction Stick, like I've been talking about. But I'm also trying the Green Dio Daily Deodorant and Squeaky Clean Sanitize products for our summer travels. Stock your pool bag or travel bag with Mega Babe this summer by visiting megababebeauty.com and using the code DIJFY15 for 15% off any purchase. That's megababebeauty.com, code DIJFY15 for 15% off. Taking it away from add-ins yes. and getting even more simple. I don't think people make pudding enough. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm not even trying to say y'all need to be making pudding from scratch. Although I do think it's incredibly easy and nine times out of 10, you probably have all the ingredients on hand. Like basic chocolate pudding is sugar, dairy, cocoa powder, corn. You can do corn starch. You don't even need eggs. You don't even have to have eggs on hand. A little bit of butter and like takes 10 minutes to actually make it and then chill it. And it's or you so can eat it warm. delicious. So delicious. So I've been on a vanilla pudding jag because Oliver loves Nilla wafers. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing like all different versions of like banana cream pie, but real low key, just like, again, in a bowl or a cup. I didn't realize that I was so into like messy summer desserts. I'm like, you could make it pretty I in know, a pie you're like, you or you could throw it in a bowl, like a big mess. <laughs> you're like, this is a Megan episode. <laughs> and then you jump in and you're like, by the way, we've been making all these things. We've been making all, all these things, but we've been making them messy. You'd probably make them super beautiful, but just like vanilla pudding, sliced bananas, vanilla wafers and whipped cream yes. like in a big bowl. Yum. And puddings, whether they're vanilla or chocolate, open up that whole world of trifles. Yes, which totally. Yeah. A traditional trifle, very traditional trifle, is like cake, like lots of liqueurs, custard, whipped cream, and fruit. So good. Like those are all the components. There's no, uh, what is it, ground beef and peas and mashed potatoes. <laughs> Isn't that the friend yes. thing that happens? <laughs> None of that none of that but you can riff on that and you don't have to make it boozy you can do like a simple syrup or like fruit juice instead it helps to soak the cake in a way that the custard doesn't and it just gives this really wonderful texture to the whole thing there's no crunchy bits in trifle but it also it's like it is different textures and still really delicious which brings me to tiramisu yes. which i love and i know that the i love a good classic tiramisu but in the summer, when you've got this great, these great fruits that are in season, you could do a berry tiramisu and soak the lady fingers in a little bit of orange juice. You could do a lemony tiramisu. I, there's just lots of different variations if you get creative. We'll link to a few for inspiration yeah. in the show notes. Okay. But um, did we hit on everything about pudding though? You can make pudding a pie. Yes. Any of those like... Cool Whip pies, you could make just straight up like make mo if you're using a box, most of them include directions for like how to use a little less of the dairy to make the pudding to make it set to be a pie filling. Um, or you can find specific recipes where it's like cooked custard to go into yep. pie filling. 
And what about rice pudding? Rice pudding and tapioca, those are other really great, easy things to make and super filling. And I'm just going to say, I think either of those could be breakfast too. (laughs) (laughs) I grew up with rice pudding as a very traditional Greek dessert. And my grandmother used to make a big pot of it like every other week. I love rice pudding and it's so great. And it just like keeps in the fridge. What else? Okay, I feel like we can't not talk about jellies. Like, yes, jello or gelled fruit or gelled fruit juice, but also the jelly set set custards like panna cotta mm, and mm-hmm. flan. I feel like I'm missing one. There's another gelatiny dessert that I'm thinking of. But like, like creme caramel. Creme caramel. Thank you. I kind of want to challenge everyone to buy some gelatin this summer. Is that too much? Is that too much? Do you keep gelatin on hand? I do keep it on hand, but I rarely use it. I mean, it's more of a like yeah. habit just to have in case I want it. Um, I was excited to see that there is a whole bunch of new plant-based gelatins recently. So that's great because I don't use mine often. I saw the same old packet from a while ago. <laughs> so I did notice that. I'm not really into gelatin desserts so much. Okay. I like the creaminess, like even flan. I like, I enjoy it, but I do prefer the creaminess of a custard or a pudding. Okay. But I think it's great. I think there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with gelatin desserts too. Yeah. And so here's my, my argument is like not buying gelatin just so you can make jello or fruit jellies. But because you can make things like panna cotta and creme caramel and all of those things, those creamy set like desserts, um, even there are some chocolate mousse recipes that require just a little bit of gelatin to stabilize them. You can use gelatin to stabilize whipped cream if you want something that's going to last like a cool whip does. So, so that's it. Those are my ideas in that section. I love buying actual jello packets for my kids to make because they can make them completely on their own and they think they're fun. I don't eat them on the regular as a dessert. Yeah. I don't really get it. Yeah, I think I don't like the texture. Yeah. Is that what it is? I just think they're one note. It's like, yeah, cherry. <laughs> yes, totally. Totally. Why? Totally. Like, it's just like that flavor. I'd rather drink Kool-Aid or like have a slushy or a snow cone. If that's what I'm going to do. So slushies and snow cones, is that a far enough away from ice cream and popsicles? I, yes. Great. I think so. I mean, one of my favorite things to do is all summer long, I keep diced watermelon in the freezer so that anyone can grab some watermelon and lemonade and make a slushie in two seconds. And it's the best. Would you serve that as a dessert if you're like having people for dinner? No, probably not if I was having people for dinner, but as an everyday yeah. weekday family dessert, 100%. I was just curious. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think I would like serve slushy in general as a dessert for people yeah. coming over. Would you? I kind of think I would. I'd never have, but like just now in this discussion, because you could make them boozy or do like a little bit of fruit topping and this, but or I say fruit, but I was actually thinking of whipped cream and thinking of our, like our neighbors who are gluten-free, dairy-free, plant-based. Sometimes it's hard to find an intersection of like baked goods that would be easy and work totally. well for them. So having fruit on the in the freezer on the fly and just turning into slushies sounds fun. Totally. I also think snow cones are really fun. And that's something that I would if you can get like a an ice shaver. They're pretty inexpensive. I think you've pointed that out before and they're so fun. And that's really great for kids, for little kids. It's just like a fun thing to do. And you can buy the syrups or you can make homemade syrups, which is also really great to do during the summer because you have all this super flavorful fruit that doesn't need a whole lot added to it to make it taste yummy. What else on slushies? I mean, you can go the like creamy, like hybrid Mm. of a milkshake. And a slushy too, like either adding ice cream or yogurt or some whipped cream. Yeah. That's really delicious. Yeah. And I'm also going to make an argument for, I know we said we weren't going to talk about ice cream, but chocolate dipped cones and just having stuff on hand to make sundaes. So like the ice cream is the ice cream. You guys can figure that out if you want to make it homemade or you want to buy it. But there's always an easy, delicious fan favorite summer dessert waiting. If you just have like 
fruit and fixings, you know, and ice cream cones on hand. And you can kind of make that up. We talked in our camping episode about campfire cones, but that's something you can do in the backyard. Or if you have the grill fired up, have the kids fill the ice cream cones with a bunch of stuff and wrap them in foil and throw them on the grill so things get melty. And that's also just really fun and easy. Yes. Anything else? I feel like there's the idea of dipping things in chocolate we've talked about for years now on Didn't I Just Feed You? Like anything can be dipped in chocolate and served as dessert. And also, Billis, Rice Krispie Treats. I was going to say, we're not going to end without talking about Rice Krispie Treats. Love them. I'm a fan. Cocoa Krispies, the way to go with a little Maldon sea salt on top. My go-to. I would say classic brown the butter before you add the marshmallows, a lot of vanilla, a hefty pinch of salt. And then a reminder that any cereal can be a Rice Krispie treat. I agree with you, although they don't all come out delicious, in my opinion. Every time I try, I want to go back to, I'm like, no, just the Rice Krispies. There is something beautiful about the like size and the crisp and the way that they clump with the marshmallows. But for sure, go crazy. It's fun for the kids. They'll love it. Cocoa Puffs. We've used Cocoa Puffs. We've used Lucky Charms. We've used Fruity Pebbles. Fruit Loops are some of my favorites. Fruit Loops. I keep trying to make Golden Grams and do like a s'mores bar with them. That one I have done and does, in my humble opinion, live up to stuff to regular Rice Krispie treats. So the thing, the problem is that I'm trying to be extra and add like marshmallow cream into it so that when you pull it apart you get that ooey gooey s'more situation like and i'm trying to like add chocolate drizzle i just haven't nailed it yet but i will continue Do to it. tinker with it I and eat the results like it just the marshmallows classic way and then mini chocolate chips because yeah. you know i've said this before i said it in our s'mores episode i don't like a heavy chocolate s'more just like a tiny bit of chocolate so those mini chocolate chips spread throughout is perfect for me but you keep working on it yeah, one of my favorites, like classic Rice Krispie treats, is to do chocolate chips and peanut butter and melt them together and put that on as sort of like a frosting topping. Uh, it's sort of like a scotcheroo. Yeah, I love it. Not quite. Yeah. I like it. Me too. So many ideas, but you know, even more ideas exist. We know that because we're part of the Day Night Just Feed You listeners community and they always have more to say. So we hope you've joined us there, but if you haven't, you can join for free at didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. Or if you want those bonus episodes, access to our recipe archive, join our supporting community. There's lots of options. You can also keep in touch with us on Instagram where we are at didn't I just feed you or by signing up for our newsletter. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to didn't I just feed you wherever you get your podcasts. If you're already a subscriber, please be so kind as to leave us a rating or review or share this episode with a friend. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gapsick. I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Stay sane and well fed until next week. Be sure to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you're listening. And don't forget to rate and review.